This road might not look like anything special, but what if I showed you the same road a few years earlier? Notice anything different? Here's a better angle of that. The old road has four lanes for traffic. The new one has two. And now there's this middle lane for left-hand turns. There's also a new bike lane. This is what transportation planners call a road diet. And it's a very popular way to make the roads safer. Over the course of the 20th century, four lane roads became an American institution. It all started with the release of Ford's Model T in 1908. A few decades later, there was one car for every two households in the States. And by the 1960s, many roads became so busy that traffic engineers had to figure out how to add capacity. So they added lanes. A lot of pavement was getting put on the ground, even where maybe the population and the traffic volumes weren't so high that really we needed that pavement, but we wanted that pavement. Sometimes, you know, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Fast forward to the present day, and we're left with some overbuilt roads that are pretty unsafe. And crash reduction is a major benefit that planners can achieve with just a bit of paint. Four lane roads have quite a few conflict points. Those are places where accidents could happen. These are merging accidents, left turn lane crashes, and rear ends. Now look at what a three lane reconfiguration does. There are far fewer crash points. A road diet can also make left hand turns suck way less. The shared middle lane takes left turners out of the traffic flow, so they won't hold up drivers who want to continue through. And now left turners will only have to cross one lane of traffic instead of two, which will eliminate broadside accidents. And the benefits don't end there. By slimming each lane in the road, the road diet can reduce travel speeds by around seven miles an hour. Narrower lanes can cause that psychological impact on the driver to slow down a little bit. The Federal Highway Administration notes that smaller lanes reduce driving speeds. And while a six mile an hour difference may seem modest, it can make an auto accident much less deadly. Narrower lanes also leave more space for expanded sidewalks or bike lanes. Your pedestrians feel safer it might have given you more green space to separate them from your vehicles. And your bicyclist might have a dedicated space to, to ride. In the midst of these changes, the amount of traffic lane has gone from two to one. So if you drive a car, you might assume that the trade-off of a road diet would be congestion. How could traffic not increase? But that's usually their concern before a road diet is implemented. That is not what happens the volume of the roadway is still sustained. We wouldn't want to put a four to three lane conversion on a piece of roadway that would then push half your traffic somewhere else. And what we found in, in a couple of places is that it actually makes moving through town easier. But traffic flow is only one part of the equation. You've got to also balance commercial and safety benefits too. Especially if this is through a urban corridor where you've got businesses, you've got coffee shops, it works. It keeps people moving, it doesn't take traffic away from that corridor, and it reduces those, those rear ends that then do stop the road. So the state of Iowa is conducting a new road survey because it's worked really well for them. A study of 15 streets in the state saw a crash reduction rate of nearly 50%. At the same time, the diet didn't substantially disrupt other activities along the corridors. A key factor was the traffic volume, measured by engineers as annual average daily traffic. Most road diets will run into problems as you approach that 15,000 vehicle number. In Iowa, many roads don't get that much traffic. The same could not be said for the suburban context in California. A study comparing road diets in Iowa to corridors in California showed that California's streets average about double the amount of daily traffic. The same kinds of road diets resulted in a much lower crash reduction rate in California, significantly lower than the reductions in Iowa. This is not to say that the road diets in California are an outright failure. It's just a difference of context for the road diet. And the success of a road diet is driven by so many other factors, economic impact, land use, or level of service, to name a few. So the case for road diets is pretty clear. They do slow down streets and they do reduce crashes. But whether or not that's worth the trouble depends very much on the context of the world that surrounds the road.